check, check, check. Okay, check. Good. Test. <laughs> Let's lower the camera up a little bit. <coughs> Testing. Can you hear me fine? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Uh, yeah, check out the room.
Hello everybody and welcome to Afrocentric High School for Grandview and Afrocentric Week 2 Friday night high school football action. Ben McCullough, John Sterniker here once again. I'm excited for this one. We <laughs> got a little bit of a scare last week but ended up um, getting a, a hard fought victory over um, Centennial. Now Grandview's back here in Week 2 looking for a, um, another win against Afrocentric. I think we're getting set for the national anthem here, so we'll step aside and let the band do their thing and be back in a second. Good evening. Please welcome the Columbus Afrocentric Early College Marching Band under the direction of Emily. Nice. Now let's honor America with the playing of the National Anthem. That's our national anthem there from Afrocentric. How about that Marching trumpeter band. right there, that single trumpeter? Did a really good job. So we're about three minutes from kickoff here. Let's talk a little bit about last week. Yeah. Um, it was Kyle Casey's first start as a sophomore. Um, he got a little bit of action last year, but his first ever varsity start was last week and did a pretty nice job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kyle went 9 of 11 with 154 yards and two touchdowns, and really – it almost seemed like he, we were talking about that on the broadcast, Ben. It connected with every <laughs> so many passes to a few guys. It wasn't just one person. He was going around, you know, sharing the ball with a lot of people. But at the end of the day, it was obviously his go-to guy, Luke Lachey, that he connected with those two touchdowns with that ultimately helped him get the win. And, yeah, I liked what I saw last week from Kyle. Now we'll see how they do this week after a, well some would say a controversial victory, but nonetheless, Bobcats, they did get the win in yeah. that game. Yeah, controversial to say the least. It was definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> controversial. A um, couple calls go different ways. That game ends in a different way, but Grandview takes the 30-28 the to 28 win last week. Kyle Casey played well. Hudson Jump also played well, but they'll be without him tonight, so that's going to be something to look out for. Yeah, I believe Kyle Casey might, or excuse me, Hudson Jump has a sprain in one of his ankles, but he, he should be coming back within the next few weeks. So, again, losing a big-time player. And we saw last week, and no games – can't take any game for granted, so yeah. we'll see how they do against Afrocentric tonight here. This is Afrocentric team who, they got beat 21-6 last week, but uh, from what I read that they did a, a pretty good job moving the ball, just got unlucky with a few turnovers. So Bobcats, and we saw what happened last year where Afrocentric, they came in and uh, they're actually leading Grandview in that game at the half, 13-6, and it was ultimately uh, those turnovers that helped the Bobcats win that game last yeah. year. So this is definitely, this is very, 
some would say quite the trap game for the Bobcats here tonight. Yeah, you said it last last year, this this Afrocentric team that we played out at Grandview, it was a good game. You said it was competitive at halftime, um, and, and Grandview benefited in the second half from a couple turnovers and was able to win the game. But you're right, can't take any of these games for granted. Couldn't take it for granted last week. They just hung on for a win, and they'll be looking to do more of the same tonight. And I think we need to keep an eye out on that defense as well because they played good in that. They played a pretty good second half. They did. Did the defense, and I, I look for them to kind of pick up where they left off. Yeah, Bobcats last week, Ben, they didn't have – it wasn't – about the turnovers last week that helped them win games. It was just about them stopping the run and stopping the passes. And that sometimes that's all you need to win a ball game. You don't always have to go force turnovers to win games. Right. As long as your offense keeps moving and you do a good job holding the opposite offense, you that's you pretty much won the battle there. But Centennial did get over the top quite a few times on that mm -hmm. secondary. So I, I think that's something to also keep our eyes on, see if that secondary improves because they did get burnt a couple times last week for big touchdowns. You can't afford that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see how they approach it, see if maybe they s space out just a little bit more. Um, but they, you know what? Bob Kessie did a good job last week. They did what they needed to do to get a victory. Um, and now they've got to turn around and see if they can keep it up. Yep. Don't, don't look back against this Afrocentric team. Just a reminder that this broadcast is sponsored by Grandview Pro Fitness, Ohio's best 24-hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's. So we're just about set to kick off here from Afrocentric High School, Grandview and Afrocentric. Grand Afrocentric won the toss and they elected to receive. So Grandview will kick it off here to get started and then they'll receive it in the second half. And we do want to apologize for any disruptions here with the, we got the PA right announcer next right them. next to us. So we're, we're doing the best we can. But Grandview, Afrocentric, just about set to go here on this chilly Friday night. Expecting a little bit of rain. I'm not sure if, if it comes down, it could certainly affect the game. Absolutely. Thinking back to that Whitehall game last oh year. Oh yeah. Whitehall was rainy the whole time. Muddy. The field very got, muddy. Yep. Field got muddy and that certainly affected that game. So if That can also change an offense with passing absolutely. and doing a lot more runs. Yep. Changes a game plan for sure. But 12 minutes on the first quarter clock here and we're set to go. Cody Cook will Send it deep. As they continue to struggle and work towards rebuilding their lives and communities. May we all observe a moment of silence at this time. Thank you for your cooperation. I think we're set to go here, Cody Cook. I believe they, we just took a moment of silence right there for what was happening over at Houston. Yep, there's the kick, the little pooch kick to the 35. That's fielded, looking for some room there. Not gonna go much there. He's gonna be brought down at the 40 yard line. That was Charlie James, I believe, with the tackle yep. right there. We saw Charlie James in that last game make some big time tackles on yeah. the defensive end. Looks like he's already picking up where he left off. So the Afrocentric offense will get us started. Angelo Summerall, the junior, number 10, the quarterback. And recall, I believe, Ben, he was that quarterback last year yes. that went up against Grandview and actually had a terrific game against the Bobcats. He did. That'll be number 23, or excuse me, 22, Justin Fudge, who's that running back. Oh, and Grandview jumps off sides. That's James Lachey over there on the right edge. A rare offside from Mr. Lachey. And just like that, Ben, Afrocentric already looking in pretty good field position. Yeah, starting at the 45 and a first and five. And that's a big thing about the Bobcats last week is the penalties really yes. hurt them so quite a bit. An early mistake from James Lachey, and now Summerall will get things started out of the shotgun. Sends Holloway, the receiver, in motion. That's who they give it to. Holloway around the edge, finds some room, breaks a couple tackles, picks up a first down into Grandview territory over inside the 40. So good opening play there. That was Dorian Holloway, the junior receiver, on the edge. Yeah, just a nice few open gaps right there, and he was able to take advantage of it. And again, Ben, last week we saw the Grandview defense do a good job closing those gaps. Um, Shouldn't be too much of a problem here early on, but let's see what type of adjustments they make after these first few runs. So 
First and ten. Ball set at the 37 of Grandview. Shotgun for Summerall. It's Fudge to his left. The snap, he looks like he's going to throw. James Lachey was coming. That one was dropped. Number eight, Joseph Russell. Couldn't quite hang on to it. Was open, though. So they'll bring up second and ten. That was a good heads-up play right there. I believe it was Brandon Spalding who was behind him, being ready to make the tackle. Um, then Brandon Spalding's one of those senior captains on the team that's very quick out. Um, not only defending receivers, but going out after the QB. Number 76 is one of the players to keep your eyes out on here tonight. Expect him to have a big game. Summerall working mostly out of the shotgun last year. Does the same here tonight to start the game. He's going to fake to Holloway and keep it himself. Summerall, a couple different moves there. Good run there. There's a flag down. I believe he picked up a first down. Let's wait on this flag. He juked out number 10, Blaine Stanley, there to pick up the first down, but let's check on the flag. But good run that time by Summerall. Certainly showing his athleticism here in this first drive. Yeah, you got to believe the Bobcats were coming in knowing that Ben, especially going up against Gilbert last week and what they saw that he can right. do. Um, got to believe that they're not going to get fooled too many times by him tonight. That was a hold on Afrocentric, so that first down will be brought back. 10.45 to play here in the first quarter. Still no score. It's the opening drive of the game. Second and long here for Afrocentric. Here's a throw over there to the near side. That's incomplete. That was intended for number four, Stefan Greathouse. So far, so good. We talked about how the coverage was going to be in the secondary band. They're doing a good job. That's now the second or third pass that they've already stopped um, from against Afrocentric. So it looks like they're doing a lot better job here tonight. A couple Just open receivers, though, yeah. and a couple drops. So yeah, they got a few lucky ones, but... They're not doing too bad, all things considered, to start off. So third and long here for Afrocentric and Summerall. I assume they're going to air it out, or they could go conservative with Fudge up the middle and play field position. Let's see what they do. It looks like Summerall is going to throw it. James Lachey got right off the edge. He's flushed out. He's going to look to throw. Has a receiver wide open. That's number four, Great House. Let's see if he picked up the first down. I think he did. On third and long, Summerall rolls out and finds Great House for a big first down. Yeah, and that was one of the things that really hurt the Bobcats last week was it stopping the third down. Centennial, they got, I believe Centennial got about eight or nine third down conversions in that last game, which really hurt the Bobcats. So there we see it again on Afrocentric. Nonetheless, Nubians are in the red zone. Yep, ball spotted right at the 20 yard line. So, good opening drive here for Afrocentric. So, we're all in the shotgun again. Sends Holloway in motion. They'll fake the toss to him, and Summerall takes Ooh. it himself up the middle. He's hit hard. Ooh. The ball's on the ground. They're going to say he was down. Summerall put the ball, he fumbled it around the 20. But the official immediately stepped in and said he was down. So yeah. second and 10. I believe that was James Lachey that was in on the throwdown right there, making up for that early offside. So. 9.55 and ticking here in the first quarter. Grandview and Afrocentric opening drive of the game for the Nubians. And this is junior quarterback Angelo Summerall as we have a flag down before the snap. I think we're going to get a delay. So that'll move it back five yards, second and 15. Let's see if that changes the game plan here for the Nubians. We're getting another whistle here. Mm 
Number one, Gerona Anderson running off the field. Not sure what that was, maybe an equipment issue. But second and 15 here for Afrocentric. Summerall gets a high snap. He's gonna look to throw, he's flushed out again. He's got some room, throws over the middle, and it's oh. caught. Caught at the five yard line. Let's see who that was. That's number two, Holloway. What a catch, the ball was bobbled, tipped up in the air, <laughs> and Holloway brings it down. Almost looked like an Edelman catch right there. It was pop, yeah, popped up in a good way to stick with it though. Um, and just come down with the catch, never give up on a play, and that goes to show right there. Good things can happen. And now after Centric with a chance to go up early. And we saw that we've already seen this last week, Ben. Yeah, all the of a Bobcats sudden at the five yard line threatening to score. Here comes Holloway in motion. Summerall gets the snap, he looks to throw. James Lachey rushing, corner of the end zone. Incomplete, couldn't get the feet down. That was Anderson, the senior. He was open over there, just must have not got his feet in. Well, that'll bring up second I believe and goal. that was Blaine Stanley on the tackle. Good heads up play to shove him out of bounds to force the incompletion. Second and goal now, and already four minutes off this first quarter clock. A perfectly scripted drive here for Afrocentric if they could punch this in. Take an early lead on Grandview, keep their offense off the field. The thing about Afrocentric thus far, they're using every wide receiver in their yes. core. Here Summerall keeps it himself. He's hit hard by James Lachey. That's going to lose about five, so that's going to bring up second and, or excuse me, third and goal from the 10. So it certainly gets tougher now for Afrocentric and you don't know what their field goal kicking yeah. situation is so it could be for Especially with territory. this weather and the coldness, all of a sudden coldness. But here we go, but yeah, third ben, and goal from the 10. Nubians have a lot of people they can go to on this drive. They've been using about three or four receivers. Looks like Anderson's gonna have to run off the field again. Certainly must be an equipment issue but he's gotta get it Worked out, that's the second time he's had to come off the field here in this first drive. 7.20 to play here in the first quarter, third and goal. Summerall high snap, big rush from Grandview, jukes out James Lachey, oh, and he's brought down, ground. ball's on the ground. That was Brand Spalding who forced the fumble. They're gonna say it was an incomplete pass oh. by Summerall, but that's gonna bring up fourth and goal from the 10. And I was just saying, Ben, keep your eye on 76, and he made a big time play there to force the completion. Excuse me, ball spotted at the 15 yard line. Now let's see what they decide to do here on fourth and goal. It looks like they're gonna keep Summer on the offense on the field, but Granby brought big mm. blitz there. Yeah, good job. I saw James Lachey, Luke Cerniker, and then eventually Brandon Spalding was the one they were able to get to him. It's that pressure that we've se seen in previous Especially in last game, in the previous years, is that Bobcats pressure that they bring on the defensive end, and Brandon Spalding just brought it right there. So you see one more stop if you're the Bobcats. All of a sudden, half the first quarter gone. There's a snap, and there's a flag thrown. There's it a few like offsides right there. I think it was offside on, on Grandview, and that is the call. So that's going to make it a little bit easier for the Nubians here. That'll bring up fourth and goal from the 10 now. So that's be a, a costly turnover yeah. or penalty right there. That's a couple times Grandview's helped them out here on this first drive. Can also change up the game plan now if you're Afrocentric. Big play here early in this game. Because now you put it in a position right here for Summerall to just run it in, possibly. Oh, and they're going to give those five oh. yards right back. This one is a false start on. Afrocentric, so back to the 15 we go, but still fourth yeah. and goal. And that 10 and 15, like I was saying, Ben, is a big difference because you get to the 10-yard line, you know, that's a possibility for Summerall to run it in, yep. running those 10 yards. But now at 15, you're kind of pushing it now with able and trying to able to run it into the end zone if you, you don't see a receiver. Yep. So oops, Summerall in the shotgun here. Fourth and goal. Snaps way over his head. He's just going to have to dive on. He picks it up, and he's brought down by James Lachey at the 35. So huge play there, snap over the head. And we saw that last week. And Grandview surrenders nothing there on the opening drive that took half the first quarter, <laughs> 625 to play. And the first. 
Grandview's offense will see the field for the first time tonight. So Kyle Casey brings out the offense. Let's see. Oh, looks like we got some compute confusion here. After Centric, some late guys running onto the field, but there's the first play, a jet sweep to Sam Speaks, I believe. Number 22, Sam Speaks. Not much gains. So that'll bring up second and 10. But Kyle Casey, the sophomore, we talked about how good of a job he did last week in his first start. See, looking for improvements every single game here from him. Yeah. We'll see how they come out. That was a you know, big time stop again from the Bobcats on defensive end. Ben. We saw that last week with a missed snap with Centennial. Yeah. Bobcats doing a good job taking advantage. And we're going to get a timeout called by Grandview, so we'll take a timeout with them. 5.09 to play here in the first quarter. Still no score. Back here, that was James Lachey on the second down carry. Picked up a few yards there, but that's going to bring up third down. And maybe a passing situation early in this one. The chains have it as second down, but I'm fairly sure it's it's third down. There we go. They got it all sorted out now. So third and about seven for the Bobcats offense. And we're seeing Harrison Morosky in there as the starting running back for, for Grandview. I'm sure they'll do that somewhat by committee. But here's Casey back to throw on third down. Rushed, throws over towards Speaks. It's caught, not gonna be enough. but not enough for the first down. That's gonna bring up fourth down and probably a punt. Yeah, and that's what they're gonna do here, Ben. And like you were saying about the running back core, Obviously, Hudson Jumpy. Now, the Bobcats, they still got a lot of options they can go with a running back. They've got Harrison Murawski. They've got James Lachey. They also have um, Alex Sterniker. they got a lot yep. of guys they can go to for the running game. So, running shouldn't be too. Sam Speaks as Sam well. Sam Speaks also. Yep. they got a lot of guys to go to. Um, Looks like a little bit of confusion here by Grandview early in this game. they got late guys running onto the field. Now, we're going to get another timeout called by Afrocentric. 3.43 to play here in the first quarter. We'll take a break. Back here getting some clock things worked out here, but 342 will be on the clock. Here in the first quarter, Grandview set the punt. So Harrison Morosky will punt for the Bobcats. And we didn't see Harrison last week. Mm -hmm. But Morosky, a pretty good punter for Grandview. That one gets caught up in the wind a little bit, gonna need a good bounce. It does get a Grandview bounce out to around the 40-yard line. So that's where Afrocentric will take over. So 
of three and a half to go. Ben Rory again near the first and the first and still a zero zero game. Bobcats you know, you'd like to see him come out and score early, but in this type of weather it's supposed to rain later on. Yep. Might not be the worst thing in the world. And again, this broadcast is sponsored by Grandview Pro Fitness, Ohio's best twenty four hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's with three thirty to play here in this first quarter. Still no score from either side. Both teams had a chance to possess the ball. Nothing doing on either side. Grandview's defense made a good stop after a snap error by Afrocentric, but now they have the ball back. Here's Summerall on first and 10. James Lachey's rushing. He's going to go deep towards Holloway. Incomplete, and I think we're going to get a flag. I feel like that might be offensive pass interference. No, nope, no call. It looked like the ref was... Going reaching for a yeah. flag, but he wasn't, so good coverage there by Blaine, Blaine Stanley. Yeah. And that's the second time now Blaine Stanley's been doing a good job um, covering Hallway. Yeah. Uh, seems like we're seeing a lot, a lot more improvement. He was yeah, on, on Burt last week. week. Burt got past him a few times, yes. but he's doing a good job thus far making big improvements here. Yeah, Burt definitely got the better of Stanley last week, but Stanley off to a good start in this one. Oh, now we have a call. Now we maybe we did get a call. There was no flag thrown. Came in kind of late there. It did come in late. But that's going to be a first down for Afrocentric. First down for Summerall. At Grandview's 45. Another high snap, Summerall collects it though. Throws over to the corner, that's number four, Great House. Picks up six or seven yards on first down. He's brought down hard by Luke Sterniker there, but that'll bring up second and four. So Afrocentric moving the ball here early. Yeah, and Summerall's doing a good job connecting to his receivers. Um, I've already made note of this, but they're using a different, a lot more people than they did as than they did last week. If you recall last week, it was mainly Burt yeah. and Womack was the ones that got the ball, but here they're using almost four or five re different receivers to go to. We gotta give credit to Afrocentric offensive coordinators for doing just that and making sure that every guy gets a good amount of catches and touches during practice. Yeah, they're spreading it around here early in this first quarter. Now Summerall fakes to fudge and he's brought down hard. That's going to be a loss of four or five, so that's going to bring up third and long. Good job there by the defense. Seems Afrocentric having a little more success through the air than mm -hmm. they are on the ground, kind of like Centennial last week. Let's see what the Cats do here now, looking at a third down, see if they can come up with big time stop. As you recall last time, Bobcats, what? On the last possession, Brand it was Brandon Spalding all the way down around the 15-yard line that yeah. took down um, Summerall. Let's see if he can do it again here. And he's been, been bringing pressure here early in this game a lot. But under two minutes to play here in the quarter, they're bringing another blitz. This is Holloway. Luke Sterniker in pursuit as well as Charlie James. And James Lachey bringing him down hard. James needs to be careful with that throw down. Yeah, but that yeah, was that close. was a... That was a hard throw <laughs> right there by James. Yeah, that was certainly close to the sideline. Good open field tackle. The Afrocentric coaches wanted a late hit possibly on Lachey, but they don't get it. So fourth and nine. Let's see. Ball spotted at the 45 of Grandview. Excuse me, the 44 of Grandview. So a likely punt, but let's see what they do. Going to be number 52, DeAndre Lunsford Ross to punt it away. Snap is He's low. On the Still going to be able to get it off. He gets off a pretty good one inside the 10. And that's a decent punt yeah. there that time by Lunsford Ross. Up to again, Granby's going to be backed up yes. on their own side. Of the Pretty deep on there outside the field. So a good punt. We'll be back for Grandview's second drive of the game here. 123 to play in the first quarter. Still no score.
First and 10, Kyle Casey out for his second drive of the game. He's gonna give it around the edge with some room to run, picks up four or five yards. That's number four, Trey Cook. We saw this again, saw another some carries last week, but they're splitting the load without Hudson Jump out there. And another running back right there for the Bobcats. They like to use. So kind of like the receiving core for Afrocentric, Bobcats love to mix it up with their running backs. You don't know who you're gonna get. Under a minute to play here in this first quarter. And again, you got plenty of time you, if you're the Bobcats. You don't have to rush to try to score and force any dumb mistakes. There's a flag thrown. Might be an offside on Afrocentric. That's exactly what it is, and that's going to be close to a first down for Grandview. I believe it is going to move the chains. So another mistake. We've seen that a couple times from both sides tonight. And that's going to give Grandview a key first down. They've struggled to move the ball here early in the game. So that'll, maybe that'll get them jump started here. 42 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Casey gives up the middle. This is Moroski who has some room. Gets a good block from Luke Lachey. Gets around the edge and gets to midfield. Good run, Harrison Moroski. He's a big time run, and we didn't see a lot of Harrison last game, Ben, nope. but he's coming out and making some big time plays for the Bobcats. I know uh, what, for, uh, I know Luke and Al Alex always tell me that Harrison does a good job in practice, and he's really trying harder. He wants to make improvements from last year, and he's he doing just that. He right did now. some good things last year when he carried the ball, and getting a chance here with Hudson Jump not playing tonight. They're going to go quickly. They give it to Harrison again. Got some lead blockers. There goes Moroski inside after centric territory now to the 35 yard line. So Grandview moving quickly now. And now they're on after centric side of the field. Seen a lot of good cuts from Harrison also, Ben. <laughs> 25 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Looks like they're gonna try and maybe run one more play before the end of the quarter. Now James Lachey is set in the backfield for Grandview. 10 seconds to play. <laughs> oh. We're gonna get another <laughs> offside. That was number six. Kenneth Reynolds, the senior linebacker, just rushed through, tried to time up the snap perfectly and wasn't able to do so. So another offside. Things are looking offside. pretty good now for the Bobcats. Yeah, now they got it inside the 35 to the 30. Casey gives up the middle to James Lachey who barrels his way through. Shakes off a couple defenders, could go. Dives into in. the end zone. Touchdown. What power by James Lachey right there, Ben, to just keep going and muscling through. Shaking off a few tacklers, and it's Lachey, boy, so you know he's getting in the, right in the end zone. And Grandview did a good job on the ground that time with Harrison Moroski a couple times. Trey Cook carried it once, and then James Lachey Finished was able it. to Barrel his way from 30 yards out to get Grandview on the board. And now Allie Giorski will come on for the extra point. Did a great job last week. Yeah. And on Wednesday. As the extra point, that is up of, and good. A lot of people know, but Hallie's actually on the girls' soccer team. She actually scored a deep goal from the 25-yard line the other day, and she connects right there. So that drive gets Grandview back on track, up seven to nothing. James O'Shea, 30 yard touchdown run. That's the end of the first quarter, so we'll be back for the second here on YouTube. Back here, get set for the second quarter. Grandview just capped off a nice drive there with a 30 yard. Got 
Picked up a 30-yard touchdown run there by James Lachey. So now Grandview will kick it deep. It's actually Georgski to kick it deep this time. The first, all of last week, we saw Cody Cook doing that, but it's going to be Georgski here to start the second quarter. With Grandview up 7-0. Georgski places it around the 25-yard line. And he's going to look for some room here. This is Fudge, the running back, and he's brought down hard at the 20-yard line. That's number 56, Cody Cook. Usually the kicker that time was in coverage. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Piers looks like he just wants to mix it up a little bit with the kickoff, and that was a nice deep kick by Jaworski right there. So let's see how what Afrocentric can do here if they have a response back after that touchdown. Just a few stats, Ben, from that first quarter. Bobcats have three sacks. They have six carries for 85 rushing yards, only allowed 12 rushing yards um, on five carries, which is the big one right there, doing an excellent job stopping the run. And then giving up 51 passing yards as Summerall is four of nine. But the rushing defense, Ben, is definitely what's been the big key for the Bobcats as we talked about that last game. Absolutely, and bringing blitz as well. So 11.45 to play here in the second quarter. There's another false start. This time that was actually the quarterback, Summerall, split out at wide receiver. It's actually Jerron Anderson in there. Maybe a wildcat type of offense that time for Afrocentric. But Summerall flinched over there on the near side. That'll set Afrocentric back five yards. But Anderson's still in the shotgun and he's gonna throw it actually. Looks for Holloway and finds him, but not much gain over there on the sideline brought down by Charlie James. Yeah, and Ben, let's see how this defense does for the Bobcats. If you recall last game, the only time they led was when they led at 30-28 with four minutes to go in yeah. that game. So they still yet to um, kind of figure out how they do with the lead and see if they can carry momentum with that. Second and 13 here for Afrocentric. Here early in the second quarter, again, Grandview leading it 7-0. Bobcats doing a good job. They'll now put at Afrocentric at minus 15. Still Anderson in there at quarterback. He's going to scramble and run. And he's brought down back to the original line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up third and about nine here for the Nubians. After a miscommunication that we saw last drive on the punt, Ben. I believe the Bobcats are going to try their best to push Afrocentric back even further to cause problems with the punt. Obviously, you want to first focus on getting the stop here. Interesting putting Anderson in there at quarterback. Thought Summerall was doing a decent job moving the ball, but here's Anderson going to throw it on third and nine. Goes to the far side. It's complete, but it's not going to be enough for a first down. It's going to bring up a fourth down now. And almost half the punt from yeah. this part of the field. I believe they are bringing out the punt team. Yeah. That's 52, Lunsford Ross, who kicked a pretty good one last time. This time kicking into the wind, though. And it's going to be Luke Lachey back by himself to return. We saw Luke say last game how dangerous he can be when he gets the ball in his hands, Ben. Let's see if he can do anything oh, here. Oh, this one's partially blocked. Oh, and Blaine Stanley went after. That's going to be a fumble. That's a fumble, and it's picked up by Afrocentric. You would think. So as soon as that ball is tipped, that's a live ball. It is, and Blaine Stanley went to grab it. So a huge mistake that time by Stanley. Yeah, the best thing to do in those situations is get out of the way. the way and just let it go. 
it's one thing if it's trickling down the goal line, you go and grab it and try and score, but in the middle of the field like that, that's a live ball. And Blaine Stanley tried to make a play on it and wasn't able to gather it. So it's going to be after centric football. So Nubians caught a huge break right there. Let's yes. see if they can capitalize on it. That's not something you see very often when Coach Peters down there having a discussion with the officials. 10.02 to play here in the second quarter. Grandview leading seven. Be interesting to see what Coach Peters is right. having a conversation with him about. And now the Afrocentric coach is going to come out. Still don't know what we're being. Both coaches now on the yeah, field. Seeing what's being discussed here. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> after center. So we thought. Yep. So we're just waiting on the official call. And Coach Peters doesn't seem okay with the call. But I think it was the right one. Blaine Stanley went after that as soon as I'm it's tipped. I wonder if he was thinking that Blaine Stanley didn't have possession after he got the ball for it to be a fumble. But I think as soon as that ball is tipped, that's a live yeah. ball. And it's if it's touched by. But nonetheless, it's going to be after Centric's ball. Yep, so I think the officials got it right that yep. time. So first and 10 for after Centric. It's Summerall back in there at quarterback. And, geez, that's a big hit that time by James Lachey. That was a nice throw down right there by James. That was Holloway, who's been active early for the Nubians offensively. James O'Shea went and tracked him the down. extra effort here tonight. That's a few big tackles already we've seen from James. I believe that's three tackles thus far. Not even close to halftime yet. Yep, 9.33 and ticking to play here in this second quarter. After center on offense, they've moved the ball pretty well. Just a couple mistakes. Snap over ahead when they were up in there in the red zone on their opening drive. Derailed that drive. Now second down and more movement up front. This is going to be a false start on Afrocentric. Yeah. That's another costly one for them. Seen a few of those for the Nubians. So that's going to move them back. It's going to be second and long now for Afrocentric. And we're going to get another stoppage. A lot of stoppages here in this first half. This is number 77 for Grandview. Joe Cotty running off the field. Maybe another equipment issue. And number nine, Alex Sterniker is going to run yep. on and take his spot. But got it sorted out now, second and long. Here's Summerall is going to throw it. Steps up, going to go deep. deep. Gets his head around, incomplete, Please. I believe. I believe that ball hit the ground. Yep. That was a great throw. Oh Charlie, yeah. Charlie James was in coverage. That was number one, Anderson, who came in and played quarterback for a couple plays. Good heads up play by Charlie at the last minute to make sure that ball was incomplete. Just barely hit the ground yeah. that time, but perfectly placed ball by Summerall over there around the 40 yard line of Grandview. Just couldn't reel it in. So now it's going to be third and very long. Another third and long situation for Afrocentric here, Ben. And more substitution issues for Grandview. Got guys running off the field very late. I'm sure Coach Peters isn't thrilled about the mm -mm. communication. Now another one coming on. Oh, Joe yeah. Cotty coming on again. And now Alex oh, Sterniker is going to run off. So, wow. They just got to get him off. Just barely gets off the field. And now Summerall is going to throw a screen pass to Fudge, who breaks a couple tackles. And then Finally he's brought down at the 30-yard line near the original line of scrimmage. So fourth and ten. And Afrocentric will have to find punt for the second time <laughs> in this drive. First time they were fortunate of a tip ball and a fumble. 
But now they'll punt it away on fourth and 10, 840 and ticking to play in the second quarter. And Grandview leading it seven to nothing. So Bobcats have been doing a good job with stopping the punt. Let's see. Two straight times, actually. Watchford Ross do it again. is going to punt it away. He's made a couple good ones. This one's around the 40-yard line. And it's going to trickle just about the 47. So Grandview gets a good starting field position here. Have a chance to go in for another nice long drive. 8.09 to play here in this second quarter. Another reminder that this broadcast is sponsored by Grandview Pro Fitness. Ohio's best 24-hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's. Ben McCullough, John Sterniker here for week two action. Grandview beat Centennial last week to move to 1-0. Looking to add to that mark mm -hmm. tonight with a win over Afrocentric. We'll lead it 7 to nothing right now here in the second quarter. Casey gives up the middle to Morosky. This has been working so far for Grandview. He picks up five or six yards on first down. That'll bring up second and four, but Morosky and James O'Shea up the middle have been working for Grandview. Yeah, it absolutely has, and it's a good job to always mix up your running backs, you know. You can't always have the same guy make try to make the big-time plays. Even in the NFL, we see that all the time. And Harrison's been doing his load as the backup RB thus far. Not, not much through the air for Kyle Casey. Not having to. They're going to give to Morosky again after the fake to Speaks. And he's going to pick up a first down down to the 30-yard line. Good run there. Harrison Morosky just filling in nicely for Hudson Jump. Morosky's a little bit, I believe he might be tying his shoe actually down there. Yep, that's what he was doing. Make yeah, sure he's but not what hurt. This does ben surely can't afford yeah. any more no, injuries no, no. at that position. But also what this does, Ben, is... Um, it's also helped out Kyle not having to force him to make any throws yep. or any interceptions or incompletions. Um, and it really bails him out. Kyle's had to throw maybe one ball thus far, and he's got a 7 nothing lead driving, possibly going up 14. Also, it rests his arm. It's Casey to Morosky again, who barrels his way inside the 25. Another good chunk that time by Harrison Morosky. And they're just going to keep running that play, whether mm. it's Morosky or, or, or Lachey, if it's working. No need to force anything through the nope. air. Also taking time off the clock, 6.45 to play in the first half now. And Granby does get the ball to start the second half. Now Casey. Sends Alex Sterniker in motion and gives it to Morosky again. Picks up another first down. Getting a huge push up front by that offensive line. Doing a nice job for Grandview. Yeah, it just seems like it's just Morosky or Lachey they are just going to keep going to. I mean, if it's working, keep going with it. Yep. 76 Brandon Spalding on that offensive line. Cody Cook on that offensive line. Doing a really good job for the Bobcats. Have James, I believe that's in the backfield. Jack Wallace also on that offensive line. Those guys doing a good job. Here's Lachey now. He's going to benefit and He's score his go second in. touchdown of the night. So Harrison, <laughs> Harrison Morosky gets him down to the 10, and James Lachey finishes it off. Yep, and that's exactly what they did last time. And they come right back with Lachey around the 20-yard line, and they just pound it right in. Way too easy for Grandview oh that yeah. time now. Take a 13 nothing lead, and it's going to be Jorski on for the extra point to make it 14. And we got a flag here on the extra point. Let's see what the call is. 6.09 here in the first half. Grandview now in control, up 13 to nothing. James Lachey, his second touchdown of the night. This time from just 10 yards out. Now Giorski's snap is good. 
And that kicks right down the middle. So Grandview takes a 14 and up in lead here halfway through the first half. And we'll take a break here and be back. Six oh nine to play here in the first half. Grandview just took control with another James Lachey touchdown run, lead it fourteen to nothing. And Giorski set to kick it off. We talked about the Hudson jump absence tonight. That's they surely haven't missed him much. Mm -mm. James Lachey as well as Harrison Morowski doing a great job running the ball for Grandview. And this is Fudge fielding it at the twenty. He's gonna try to navigate his way outside. And Cody Cook had a hand on him, couldn't bring him down, and now Charlie James does. And again, Charlie on the stop. That's about, I believe that might be the first. Oh, excuse me, that's Alex Sterner oh. there. <laughs> I was going to say, but, oh, yeah, good job, Alex. <laughs> See you at home. Uh, but nonetheless, um, yeah, Granby's been doing a good job, Ben, with the running game, especially Harrison Murawski. You know, here's a, he, this is a perfect, it's a good story about a guy who last season had many injuries. He did. He started at running back the first few games. And due to injuries, unfortunately, like he wasn't able to come back that much. Fast forward all this time later, uh, we didn't see a lot of him in that first game, but here he is just shining and really just earning himself more and more carries with the more carries he gets, it seems like, making some big time runs. Just over five minutes to play here in the first half. And we're going to get a discussion. Looks like Hyper Centric might be down a man. Or they had one too many guys on the field. A lot of confusion in this first With half. Two substitutions. Yeah, this has happened on both sides, sides quite a yeah. few times. And now we're going to get an Afrocentric timeout. So some confusion going on here. 4.51 to play in the first half. Grandview leading at 14 and up. Now we're set to go first and 10 here. Here's Summerall's gonna throw it. The far side of the field, it's caught. Actually, oh, intercepted by Blaine pop, Stanley. That popped out and that's gonna be an interception. Blaine just ran out of bounds after he caught it. But yeah, Stanley was right place, right <laughs> time that time. It looked like it was gonna be a catch and about a five yard gain for Joseph Russell. But it popped out of his hands and Blaine Stanley was, Stanley was there and it's his first interception of the season. Yeah, excellent heads up play by Blaine to watch where the well was watch where the ball was going and was just at the right like you said, Ben, right place at the right time. And Bobcats now have a chance to really open things up with a touchdown here. Especially again the ball starts second half. And with four four 
with 4-4-4 to go, Ben, you still got plenty of time to just keep going with the running game yeah. here and pounding things in with Murawski and Lachey. Well, they haven't shown they can stop Lachey or Murawski yet. Mm -mm. It is Murawski set in the backfield. Casey gives to him, there he goes. He's got a lot of room, he's just barely brought down, but a flag thrown. I think it's gonna be a hold on Grandview. It is. It's a lot of room to run there for Morosky, but a hold brings it back. I haven't seen a lot of penalties though from the Bobcats. Remember that was a big thing that really hurt Grandview last game, and that I believe that's only the second or third that we've seen. So Grandview doing a lot better job making sure they don't do any unnecessary um, penalties. That'll set it back. That's going to make it about first and 15 for the Bobcats, but they're to the line quickly here. Moroski still in the backfield. They're going to give to Alex Sterniker this time. That was kind of an awkwardly developed play, but Sterniker picks up six or seven yards. It looked like an illegal shift mm -hmm. or something there on Grandview, but no call. Mm -hmm. And Sterniker bring, picks up six or seven yards. And Alex is another one of those guys that they like to use, Ben, um, here and there to make some big time runs. If you recall, he got a 12-yard uh, run last game. Four minutes to play. Grandview now controlling the clock and controlling the score up 14 to nothing. Some late guys running on. Trey Cook just barely gets on the field and there's a flag thrown. There might be too many men now. They're actually going to get offside. Oh. Sloppy game though in this first half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of penalties seem like they've been actually pretty fair. Just the substitutions is really what's been the big thing holding things back a bit, Ben. See if that changes the game plan at all. High formation this time. There's going to be some play action. They're going to throw. He's got a wide open receiver. It's caught. He just caught it. barely. That's Luke Sterniker. Down there at the five yard line, great shoot what screen catch that yeah, time. Yeah, what by a great Sterniker. job by Luke to come back and uh, make sure he gets the catch first before anything else. And we saw Luke, uh, especially in that, I remember Ben going to that scrimmage game. He actually had a few catches to him. He actually had a touchdown catch in that game. So <laughs> they they don't go to him a lot, but he they went to him right there and he paid it paid off big time. And he was wide open, mm -hmm. a throw on stride. He could have scored, but Casey threw a little bit off his back foot. Was able to find him at the 10 yard line. So now Grandview in good position to punch another one in. I believe it's another offside on Appocentric. That's exactly what it is. So that's gonna move Grandview half the distance down to the five yard line. Clock running at three minutes and 30 seconds. They give to Lache around uh, the edge. Number three. It looks like, yep, touchdown. And he's a little shaken up there. Let's make sure he's okay. Oh, yeah. A little bit of an awkward hit Ball there on the James Lache, but three touchdown lead now for Grandview yeah. taking control. Oh, looks like he's going to be in the next play, so looks like he's going to be able to, looks like he's good to go still. Now it's Shiorski to add on the extra point. That was a little bit of a line drive. They got it. But good, 21-0. Grandview leads at 322 to play in the first half. We'll be back.
Back 322 to play in the first half. Grandview with a three touchdown lead. All three touchdowns courtesy of the Bowling Green, <laughs> the senior James Lachey. Future Falcon in James Lachey. The Oilers field a kickoff for Grandview. This is a good one. Around the 20 yard line fielded by Holloway. He navigates his way through there and gets actually all the way out over the 30 yard line. So good return that time by Holloway. Now let's see if Afrocentric can get something going offensively. Certainly needs to make something happen before halftime. Yeah, like you said, Ben, now down 21 nothing with the Cats getting the ball at the start of second half. It's about getting near that time where Nubians need to get, they have to get something on the board to stay in this ball game or yeah. else with the way the Cats have been moving the ball, they're not going to get many opportunities to stop this Bobcats offense. So Interesting if they formation. Need drive, this has got to be it. Look at this formation they're starting with here on first and ten. Split all the way out there, most of their offense. And Peter sends out his guys all the way over there, too. They're going to go to this side of the field. It's caught. That's Summerall, the quarterback. He's got room to run. Luke Lachey, the only chance. Touchdown. There it is. And wow. Nubians tried something different in that formation and paid off big time. We just said they needed to get something going. Let's see if that changes anything. And Holloway finds some room. A good throw by Anderson, mm -hmm. who they brought in there a couple times to play quarterback. Yeah. They they brought they set their whole offense to the far side of the field and just brought it over here with Anderson and Summerall by themselves with one on one coverage. And, and Summerall made a play and went all the way. Very interesting formation, Ben. We've seen that formation in the past, though, especially in the NFL, they do it sometimes yeah. where it's just a snapper and a um, right in the center, or in the quarterback, excuse me, and all the guys are lined up and they just mix it around, they just heave it up and it paid off for the Nubians. Yeah, worked to perfection that time and gets Afrocentric jump started. There's the extra point, it's blocked. blocked. They can take this back, back if they pick it up. And they're just gonna, I believe that's the college. Dead ball, yep. NFL, you can take it back. And I believe in high school it just ends, but nonetheless, Got through the line really easily that time. Yeah. Easy block for Grandview. So 21 to six they lead. But a big touchdown for Afrocentric there. Maybe gets them back on track before halftime. Yeah, much needed touchdown right there by Nubians. Can't go in the locker room being down 21 nothing yeah. against this offense. But now Grandview gets the ball back here before half. Yeah. Still plenty of time for the Cats. Even if even if they want to stick with the run, they still got plenty of oh, time to no get doubt. down the field with yep. three, still with three minutes to go. Still a couple timeouts to work with as well. But we'll take a break. 3.03 to play here in the first half. Three oh three to play, first half. Grandview getting the ball back now after that after centric touchdown. Anderson to Summerall. Made a play. Luke Sterniker tried to track him down, but he went all the way into the end zone to get the scoring started for Afrocentric. Twenty one motivates six. Nubians a little bit right. on the de defensive end. We're gonna get a flag thrown. I believe it's gonna be on Afrocentric. Legal procedure on the kickoff. So some formation and that's a pretty decent kickoff too. Let's yes. see if that changes that's anything. Gonna move them back five yards. So Afrocentric got all the momentum right now. Last thing you need to do is give Bobcats good field position. So 
set to kick it off now again. Barring any penalties here. With just over three minutes to play. Grandview leading at 21 to six. A reminder, this broadcast is sponsored by Grandview Pro Fitness, Ohio's best 24 hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's. Here's the kickoff now. Still it's a pretty decent kick. Yeah, gonna be fielded by Luke Lachey around the 30. Lachey surveys. Makes a couple cuts oh. still on his feet. Gets to the 45. So some good, good cuts right there by Luke. Yep, good return by Luke Lachey. And now the offense comes back out onto the field with 250 to work with. See what the Cats do here now. Couple timeouts to work with for Grandview. Mm -hmm. They're asking for some more time on the clock. 2.40, I believe. Yeah, it's yeah I believe it's 2.40. There we go, all set. 2.40 on the clock, couple timeouts to work with for the Bobcats. Might be time for it to see Kyle he throw up a few passes. Maybe. Haven't seen much from him thus far, haven't had to. <laughs> they were starting with some play action. And they got a flag on the field. Mm -hmm. Another offside on Afrocentric. Yep. Add that to the list for penalties for the Nubians. Penalties have been killer for the Nubians here. About 10 extra yards if you factor in that kickoff five yard penalty. Yep. The Cats have very good field possession here. Here's the hand Alex. Off. Alex Sterniker picks up a first, first down. down. Around the edge that time. I'll stop the clock momentarily. Yep, I'll move the chains. Remember, it's like the college rule now where if you get first down, the clock always stops. For about 10 seconds until they get those chains yeah. change started. But now it's running with under two and a half to play. Still plenty of time the way Grandview's moving the ball here in the first half. You, and you can still run it with 2.20 to go. They're, they're going to throw they're one. They're going to throw it up towards Luke Lachey. He's open. Oh, Couldn't reel it in. He had a step on the defender. And that was that Kyle Casey to Luke Lachey hookup we saw a couple times last week. That was just, just marginally overthrown. Yeah, just a little bit overthrown, but nonetheless, still a pretty good pass by Kyle. Luke almost made a big time play, one handed grab right there, but just couldn't hold it in. That's going to bring up second and 10 now. I assume they'll go back to the ground yeah. with 2.12 to play. After Centric late getting set up. See if Grandview goes quickly. They do, and they give it up the middle to Morowski, who picks up four or five yards. Okay. Puck will still move, though. Yep. Not enough for first down. That's going to get under two minutes now. We'll bring up a third and five, third and six. Now you got a few options here, Ben. You can try to stick with the run and go flashe up the middle, or you can try to air it out. You know, Kyle, he hasn't had many thrown passes before, so it's kind of a risk, but nonetheless, he, the numbers speak for itself of last game, so let's see what the Bobcats decide to do here. They've been picking up big yardage mm -hmm. with Morowski. See if they go back to him. And another stoppage. I think Coach Peters called a timeout. Take a timeout, yeah. A lot of communication issues. I'm sure he's not happy, but we'll take a break. 131 to play, Grandview driving. Here we go, third and five for Grandview. 
They're going to give it around the edge to Speaks, who's going to pick up a first down. Cuts back, still, still on his feet. Gets over the 20-yard line. Stop the clock line. for a quick second. Yep, so they're going to stop that clock at 123 until they get the chains moved. But now Grandview in the red zone in great position to tack on more points before half. And you still got timeouts, Ben. You can still stick with that running yep. game. Let's see if they go to Lachey. Lachey has three carries for three touchdowns. Right. Although he was a little shaken up on that last one. But let's see what they do here. Clock ticking now, 115. Blaine Stanley split out here at receiver, one-on-one -on -one coverage if they want to go to him. They're going to give it around the edge to Alex Sterniker, who cuts it back, gets a couple blocks, and he's hit hard at the 15. Nothing doing. After about a five-yard gain, and the clock will tick under a minute now. Gravy still with time, but maybe needs to pick up the pace a little bit. Ball yeah. spotted at the 15, 45 seconds and ticking now. And now we're yeah, going to get a timeout call. Time I actually got a flag thrown. I think it was a yeah. sideline warning on Grandview. Yep. Which actually benefits them. It stops the clock yeah. momentarily. <laughs> An inadvertent flag that might help, but nonetheless, Bobcats, they got to try to, and Kyle's going to go down. Yeah, Casey, little but trying to give it off to Trey Cook, it looked like. And he just kept the ball. I think the line broke down a little bit that time. So now 30 seconds to play, and it's going to be third and very long. Third and about 13 for Grandview. And the Cats took their third and final timeout right here, Ben. Um, so you got a few options here with it being, I believe it's fourth down. Um, I mean, it looks like it might be a little too far for a field goal, so you got to try to go for a first down or just heave one to the end zone and hope something happens. Or maybe if you could possibly get down near the 15, you could bring out Georgie and see if she could kick yeah. it from there or say four down territory, maybe get half of it here and then go for yeah. it on fourth down. But you got to be careful with only 30 seconds to go because right. you keep it in play, you know, it's a fourth down, you might not have enough time to get off that field goal. So. Right. You got to play it safe if you're going for a throw. Look toward the the sideline. So maybe a couple plays drawn up here by mm -hmm. Coach Peters to expect the throw for sure. Yes. Though. And 21 to six is the Grandview lead with 30 seconds to play in the half. This time Casey's going to be in the shotgun with James Lachey to his right, and he's going to throw, and we got another flag. Sideline looked like a sideline warning on Afrocentric. Yeah, and that one now is going to go against Afrocentric. It's an interesting call. Hmm. I think a coach was just barely on the field, and the They're official must yeah. must have been looking for it. Not sure about that one, but nonetheless, 30-10 now. Here's Casey. A lot of blitz. They're going to throw this screen. The James get out of bounds. A flag's thrown. Lachey's going to pick up the, the first, first down. down. That's going to stop the clock. But there is a flag, which is going to stop the clock yeah. altogether here. And that's going to come back. Holding on Grandview. I think it was Brandon Spaulding, who's not happy about the call. So now uh, that makes things yeah. a lot, little bit more tougher here. It's going to be third and very long now. Now you're looking for maybe a 15-yard pass around the edges here if you want to attempt a field goal. Or give yourself at least a chance to go for it on fourth. Of course, yeah. But this ball is going to be spotted way back. Oh, like, sorry, I thought the ball was going to be on 30. Yeah. Might be about 20, 25 at yeah. this point. It might be time to just go up for it's grabs. Like, yeah. Still third down, 25 seconds to go. Now you can throw it in play if the goal is to get a short pass and then get one more off. Uh, they might Let's see what the Bobcats do. Might they might just play it safe here and give it to Lachey, which you never yeah. know could work out. There he goes. Lachey on his feet over the 30-yard line, still on his feet. Barrels through now some fourth guys down. to the 25. That's fourth down with no timeouts. They're going to try yeah. and go quickly. Peters is trying to get him up to the line. They have to hurry. Five seconds. They're not going to get it off. And that's going to that's yeah, that's gonna end the half there. So 21 to 6. 
will be our halftime score. Yep. Uh, kind of a, and there's still some confusion on the field. There's no time on the clock. I'm not sure what the problem is. That's going to do it for the first half. Yep. So an interesting sure. first half, a little sure. bit, a little yeah. bit of hectic first half, but Grandview leads it 21 to six. Yeah, Bobcats did a good job coming out and scoring. They've been doing a good job defensively besides that one play. Um, expect them to come out and try to end things and take care of business. Come start the second half in the running game. Yeah. It's been just dominant for the Cats. Right. A sloppy first half, but three Lachey touchdowns give them a 21 to six lead. So we'll be back after halftime. Ben McCullough, John Sterniker here on YouTube.
Here we are back from halftime. Grandview leading it 21 to 6. Again, Ben McCullough, John Sterniker here week two. Grandview won last week against Centennial and lead it 21 to 6 here tonight over Afrocentric and they'll be getting the ball here to start the second half. Let's go over a couple stats. Um, James O'Shea has four carries for 70 yards and all three Grandview touchdowns. Um, Grandview as a whole has 19 carries for 186 yards, so that's the success on the ground we were expecting. Yeah, absolutely. It's just been, uh, it's kind of been just a running game that's been uh, helping out the Bobcats. With the, it's like you're saying, the help of Murawski and Lachey. Yep. It seems like all they're doing is just letting Murawski take the ball down to the, around the 10-yard line, letting Lachey punch it in, and I mean, it's been working. And like I was saying, you got to give credit to Murawski. He's the player that last year, you know, he had a lot of injuries ha happen to him, which you know, kind of made things, you know, not a little bad for him. But nonetheless, here he is back, and he's really contributing and doing a good job, especially in this game. He's really shining, and uh, it's been about the runs on one end and in the other because after Centric, they've been held to negative rushing yards. So defense doing a good job stopping the run, and they're also doing a good job opening up the run. And penalties have also been an issue for both sides, but especially for Afrocentric. Mm -hmm. 11 penalties for them for a total of 60 yards. A lot of those five-yard penalties um, with offsides and false starts, but that's something they certainly have to clean up here to start the second half. But Grandview will get the ball. Again, a reminder, this broadcast is sponsored by Grandview Pro Fitness, Ohio's best 24-hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's. Yeah, let's see how the Bobcats do right here, Ben. This is a chance for Bobcats to really open things up with this touchdown to make it a three-touchdown game. You got to think they're almost in full control, but we've seen some Afrocentric late in that first half, but they're not done quite yet after that big touchdown reception from Summerall. And yep. uh, let's see how, let's see how what they do coming off um, the second half. Yeah, it looked like Grandview was in jeopardy of breaking it way open there, but then that touchdown by Summerall kind of got things settled down for the Nubians. But now Grandview, another chance to seize control here. If they can come out and drive down the field and, and score again, certainly that would go a long way. Mm -hmm. So it's Luke Lachey and Sam Speaks back deep for the Bobcats. And also what this does is helps out Kyle Casey a lot. We haven't had him to make any, really any big time passes thus far because of the running game. Um, but we saw on the sideline with almost five minutes ago, Ben, that Kyle Casey was warming his arm up. So maybe they're going to try something different and go for a few more passes here in the third quarter. But about to send it deep towards Lachey and Speaks. See if the game can clean up a little bit penalty-wise. 17 total penalties in the first half. Here's Speaks taking over the 40-yard line. Good return out to the 45. That's where Kyle Casey will trot out the offense right at the 45-yard line, so good starting field position. And a big drive to really take control of this game. See what they do here early on, see if they just try to continue with the running game. Or like I was just saying, want to open up for Kyle Casey and make some a few passes to get him going a little bit. They're going to go to Moroski right away. He stays on his feet and gets onto the Nubian side of the field. And Late there's flag. a flag thrown. So maybe it won't clean up penalty wise. Mm. <laughs> First play from scrimmage of the second half. The penalty on the, f on the field. And it's going to face mask on. Afrocentric, so make that 12 penalties on the Nubians. And that's certainly costed them tonight. And so that's going to be a first time, first down for Grandview out to the 42. Yeah, we just one snap right there, Ben, and the Cats are already on the 41 of Afrocentric. Yep. Nubians really bailing out the Bobcats with some of these penalties that they're making. This is Speaks, who's hit hard Ooh. right at the line of scrimmage, and he'll actually end up losing a couple yards. But Speaks tried to go around the edge, and well defended that time by Afrocentric, was hit hard at the 42. That'll bring up second and 13. I think that might have been Landon Steele, the freshman, 
with that tackle for the Nubians. Now this is Moroski around the edge, stiff arms a tackler. Then he's brought down at the 42 yard line. So maybe a gain of two or three to get back to the line of scrimmage. But that's gonna bring up third and 10. This might be a chance for Bobcats to try to throw with Casey. Kyle Casey spotted at the ball spot at the 42 yard line, third and 10. There's Casey and there's a flag. It's gonna be a false start on Grandview. So a couple penalties on both sides here to start the second half. This one was a false start on Grandview. So that's gonna make it third and long. and 15 to play here in the third quarter. Now third and 15, let's see if Grandview maybe plays a little bit conservatively here. They do, they give it to James Lachey right up the middle and he's hit immediately. So that's gonna be a big stop for Afrocentric to get their defense off the field. Yeah, um, keeps Afrocentric in, definitely in it now. We talked about that big play before the half, yeah. and they got a chance to cut the lead to possibly seven or eight here. Here's Moroski. This is a good one. It's going to bounce around the 20 and bounce out of bounds around the 10. So good punt that time, Harrison Moroski. But after Centric getting the ball back here with 9.31 to play in the third quarter, 21 to 6, Grandview leads it. And a reminder, this broadcast is sponsored by Grandview Pro Fitness, Ohio's best 24-hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's here with 9.31 to play. And the third, and there's another flag. Add it to the tally of penalty flags here tonight. Hmm. That's now 17, maybe 18 now total penalties combined. It's something you can't afford when you're trying to get back into the game. It looks like they might be waving. Oh, they are. They are waving it off. Flag. But we had somebody run off the field. Very late. Yeah, it was number 68, Shayon Brown. So check on him. Maybe an equipment issue for him. But here's Summerall's in the shotgun by himself. He's going to throw it. Goes out here towards Anderson. Those two hooked up earlier for a touchdown. Now goes Anderson down the sideline. He's gone. One man to beat. It's Murawski. Anderson, touchdown. And just like that, Ben, Nubians right back in this thing. After being down 21 nothing, they've cut the lead now down to now nine. But we have a flag. I think it's I think it's gonna be on Grandview, so that's a touchdown for Afrocentric and gets them right back into the game. 21 to 12. Just a simple screen pass from Summerall out there. To Anderson. It looks like they may be going for two here, Ben. Yes, they are. Trying to cut it down to just a one touchdown game. And this is big. This could still keep that two possession if the Bobcats can get a stop. Oh, oh low it's snap. Ground. It's on the ground. He picks it up. He's going to have to get rid of it in a hurry. Maneuvers his way out of there. Has a receiver. Got it. They picked it up. So 21 14. And all of a sudden. And for the Cats feeling comfortable. Nubians have answered back after those three touchdowns. So in the first half, it was Jerron Anderson to Angelo Summerall, and this time it was Summerall to Anderson. All the way down the field for a touchdown. Anderson found a seam down the sidelines, and he was gone. 
And now it's a seven point ball game in a game that we felt that Grandview had pretty good control yeah. of. And they were driving there on their first possession of the half. And let's see if and this motivates the offense, Ben, right. because, you know, they're feeling, it seems like they're just kind of breezing past this game yep. after going up 21 nothing. But Afrocentric has fired back. Now you're in a possession position now if you're the Bobcats. you got to come down and try to score. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about the big play factor last week, Centennial. Yeah. Multiple big plays on the Grandview defense. Absolutely. Same thing here tonight. Grandview defense has played a pretty yeah. good game aside from those two big plays, and that's cost them on the scoreboard. Yeah, and we also talked about that Centennial game, Ben. Yeah. Um, it was the Stars where they would answer every time the Bobcats would nod things up, and it seemed like every time the Cats would you know, tie the game up and things look good, then Centennial would have an answer. And now Saffir Centric's doing the same here. So now an interesting dynamic to this one here in week two. Grandview letting Afrocentric hang around just a little bit and now find themselves just up a touchdown. But Blaine Stanley and Luke Lachey this time back deep. This one's going to be fielded by Lachey at the 25. Looks for room. There goes Lachey. He has a seam. He has one guy to beat the kicker, stiff arms him and gets out over the 30 yard line. So great return that time. Luke Lachey got some good blocks. And now that'll be good starting field position, maybe get the game back under control. <laughs> yeah, and if you're a cat here, you know, even though you have the lead, this you would like to have try to get a score in and uh, shift some momentum back to your side because the momentum's all with the uh, um, uh, Nubians right now. Absolutely. 8.55 to play. We saw in Centennial game, it's those situations where momentum is such a big thing yeah. where it can decide a ball game. And, you know, your Bobcats, you can't let it shift over too much to Afrocentric or else they're going to end up taking the lead at some point. 8.55 to play here in this third quarter. Again, 21 to 14. But you can't panic also. You can still go to Morowski and Lachey. And that's what they do let here. Let they give it to Morowski up the middle for five yards. Yeah, we don't need a, you know, we don't need a bomb right away from Casey to Lachey. We can slow things down and get a nice long drive going here. And the good starting field position certainly helped. And now it's Casey under center with Morowski behind him again. Sends Speaks in motion and they'll give it to Speaks around the edge. Jukes and maneuvers his way for a first down. Looks like it's going to be enough for a first down. Yep. Close to the 20 yard line. Grandview's got to find a way to punch it in. They've been down here a couple times near the red zone and a couple penalties have derailed drives. Mm -hmm. And this is one you certainly have to finish off in a game that Afrocentric has and snuck their way back into. Yeah, everyone's got to play their part. You can't afford any penalties. You got to make sure you're doing, uh, you're being very cautious of what your role is, you know. Now Casey's in the shotgun this time. He's going to give to Lachey right up the middle out of the shotgun. And he'll pick up three yards on the first down carry. And bring up second and seven. And again, Ben, you're in no rush if you're if the Bobcats. You still got seven and a half to go in the third quarter. You know, just slow it down a little bit. That's Sometimes that's the best way to change momentum is just slowing things down and coming up with a nice long score. Here's Speaks around the edge once again. Nowhere to go for him. And that's gonna, I think he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. So third and seven, mm -hmm. and a big third down at this part of the field. It might be four down territory for Kyle Casey and the offense. We'll see what happens on the third down. 7.08 to play and ticking here. And the third, 21 to 14, Grandview leads it after the Anderson long touchdown for, or excuse me, for Afrocentric. So third and seven, Casey's under center. He's gonna throw it, he's got a wide open receiver. Luke Sterniker was wide open, but I think we had a flinch up front. It's a false start on Grandview and Luke, that's costly because Luke mm -hmm. Sterniker was gonna down be, the seam mm -hmm. wide open for a touchdown and Casey was looking for him but they stopped the play, false start. So penalties once again might be the difference here in this drive. Mm -hmm. 
Seems like penalty has been hurting the Bobcats a little bit more the second half thus far, Ben. It really killed Afrocentric early on in that first half. It looks like it's starting to go against the Cats. Shotgun Casey Moroski to his right. And I believe Coach Peters is going to use one of his three second half timeouts. So we'll take a timeout with him. 6.48 to play here in the third quarter. 21-14 Grandview lead. Go third and eleven here for the Bobcats. Motion. Casey's gonna throw over the middle, wide open. Stam speaks, but he missed him. So an errant throw there from Kyle Casey. Sam speaks was down the seam, wide open. Maybe that's a sign of things to come. That's two straight yeah. plays for Grandview has had wide open receivers. I say I wouldn't be surprised if the Cats try to open up the pass a little bit more. And they're doing just that at this point. We have a hurt Bobcat, and I don't think he's hurt. I think it's just a equipment issue. Maybe a shoe came off. I believe that's James Lachey actually down there tying his shoe. But fourth and 11, it'll be in decision time for Grandview. Mm -hmm. Probably the part of the field where you go for it because it's too far, certainly, to kick a Jorski field goal. And you can't punt from the 20-yard line, so it looks like it's going to be Go time here for Grandview offense, and this is a big play. If they don't pick this up after Centric get, gets the ball at the 20-yard line. And here's some more miscommunication. Late guys running on the field. Casey's going to throw. He's going to go towards Lachey, up for grabs, incomplete. No flags. And, and it was derailed from the start by some miscommunication over there on the sidelines. They had guys running off the field late. Yeah. And that's happened a lot of times tonight. Mm -hmm. And those things, those are things that can't happen. If you're trying to, especially if you're trying to win a game on the road, yeah, it's tight like to game out. Looks like I'm have an injury though. We do, but 6:38 to play, 21 to 14, Grandview leads, and Afro Centric's going to get the football back right after this. Back here, third quarter, 6.38 to play. And after Centric, a chance to drive down the field and potentially tie the game. After all that's happened, Grandview took a 21 to nothing lead and now 14 unanswered from Afrocentric. Have them within a touchdown. I believe that's number two, Dorian Holloway in there at quarterback and we have a timeout. Miscommunication is the name of the game tonight, and there's more of it here. So off an injury, which was almost a free timeout, Afrocentric uses one of their valuable timeouts here in the second half. So we'll take another break, 6.38 to play.
I think we're all set to begin Afrocentric's drive. It's a big First drive for ten. both teams right here. Afrocentric have a chance to tie things up. Bobcats, they need a stop. Afrocentric has been easily moving the ball on them lately. It's Holloway, the direct snap, and he's just going to run it right up the middle. He's going to cut back to the other side of the field. But Grandview has it pretty well bottled up. But Holloway's still on his feet at the flag thrown. And Holloway gets out over the 40-yard line. Let's just see what the call is Let's here. see what the flag is, but Holloway did a great job switching fields that time. And picking Looks up like a it might be coming back. huge gain. Let's see what the call is. That's going to be a holding on after Centric. Personal, personal foul, actually. Holding penalty against Nubian. Not sure who was on. But that's a big penalty because big penalty on Afrocentric because yeah. that was a huge gain there for Holloway getting over the 40 yard line. Grandview's got to be careful here defensively. That was a nice cut by Holloway to yep. switch sides over there. Knew he was in trouble. Nothing going so why not go the other side and the blockers did a good job on that effort on that for Afrocentric right there to open things up. Six twenty-three and a long third quarter here. The ball spotted all the way back at the around the ten yard line. First and twenty. Holloway still in there, quarterback taking the direct snap. And he's going to run it right up the middle again. This is actually Anderson this time taking that direct snap. Mm -hmm. and he picks up a solid gain that time on first down. And again, it just seems like Afrocentric is really motivated then. Despite the penalty, they just came out and about got about 15 yards on a run. They're up on their toes trying to catch Grandview sleeping. So that's going to bring up about first and 15 now or excuse me, second and 15 for the Nubians. But interesting, the quarterback rotation they've been going with as well. I believe it's Summerall back in there, their normal quarterback, but they've gone with Anderson, they've gone with Holloway a couple times. And another whistle blown. center's going to run off the field again. I've never seen so many stoppages of play in one game. Second and 15. I'm not sure what that stoppage was all about, but Summer nonetheless. is going to throw it. And he's going to be Throw sacked down, that yeah. time by Brandon Spaulding. And Brandon, like I was saying at the top of the broadcast, someone to keep your eye on. He almost had a sack early on in that first quarter, and now he finally brings him down. Under six minutes now to play. That's going to bring up third and long here and a chance for the Grandview defense to get off the field and get the ball back and get this thing under control. Mm -hmm. yeah, These penalties have really been killing after yeah. Centric. It's going to be in from uh, possibly a third and short to yep. now a very deep. As now they have a delay of game, so now that's going to bring back even five more. But certainly things to clean up over this week until the next game for both teams mm -hmm. because penalties have been an issue and a lot of guys running not really knowing exactly what's going on before plays pre-snap. 
Now it's going to be third and almost unmanageable here. Third and about 20. Wouldn't be surprised if Afrocentric just keep take. Summer is going to go deep over here near side of the sideline. Charlie James, great Good defense. Job. Made a great play on the ball that time. He was looking for Holloway down the it near side of the field. It would have been a big gain, and it was actually a decent yeah, actually throw. And it was in his hands there for a quick sec, but Charlie did a good heads-up play. That's about the third or fourth time now he's gotten the ball out of their hands yep. before they could come out with the catch. Shows a player that likes to stick with the play until it's over. That's going to be a fourth down, and Afrocentric's had trouble with their punting unit, Ben. This would be the worst time for right. it. If you recall what happened at Centennial... <laughs> Last week here. Another late man running onto the field for the Nubians. Seen a lot of them from both ends. And there's another one. Two more. Man. <laughs> That's a good snap that time. Oh. Almost blocked. It's off the side of his foot, though. Takes an Afrocentric bounce. Looks Grandview's still going to start on Afrocentric side of the field when we come back 443 to play in the third. Casey, give it to Trey Cook around the edge. He looked for some running room, Ooh. but couldn't find any. There's a flag thrown. They might be calling for a horse collar right there. There was a hit around the neck there. They're actually going to say a face mask. Personal foul, foul face mask. mask. That's a costly penalty. It didn't look like a face mask. Yeah, it definitely was a, a hit around the neck, neck but it but didn't look like, like he grabbed face the face mask. mask. But nonetheless, Bobcats are going to catch a break. For sure. And that was a negative gain there for Trey Cook. But instead, he's going to move the ball inside the 30-yard line. Let's see if the Cats can take advantage now here. Being down within the 30. Upper center kind of build him out there. Shot, shotgun for Casey. Now you can just oh, go fumble, fumble the snap. snap. Keeps it himself. He has a receiver. It's Luke Lachey caught, caught at the 10-yard line. Lachey on it's his in, feet. Touchdown. touchdown. And good that job, Lachey, shaking off the defender and just running straight into the end zone. And that play tells the story of tonight. Mm -hmm. Fumbled snap. Casey picks it up and just slings it up to Luke Lachey for a touchdown. All touchdowns by the Lachey boys. Unorganized, hectic. And seven points for Grandview as the Jorski comes out for the extra point. Six points is six points, but that surely is not how you how you drew uh -huh. it up. Jorski kick right down the middle, and Grandview now has a two touchdown lead. I really don't even think that was a designed pass play. Uh -huh. All Casey of a sudden, just found yeah. it. Lachey's in there and open. Really and really smart Lachey by took Casey. advantage of it. Yeah. A lot of guys just kind of dive on that ball. Or they'll throw it out of bounds. Right. Casey picked it up and just kind of threw it up to Lachey and hoped that he could make a play. And Lachey did just that. Exactly. So 28-14 with 4.24 to play in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Twenty-eight fourteen, coming off a touchdown by Luke Lachey. 
with 24 to play in the third, and Jaworski set to kick it deep. Two kicks, places it around the 25. Trey Cook in pursuit, and he's the one who brings him down, tries to rip that ball out. Almost did, too. Good play by Trey Cook, and good coverage there by Grandview. And Afrocentric will start at the 28. But if you missed it, Luke Lachey with the touchdown grab there on the play before. Kyle Casey fumbled the snap. Looked like it was supposed to be a running play. He picked it up and went right to Luke Lachey, who was double covered but was able to make a play and go into the end zone. So Grandview takes a 14-point lead now with just over four to play in the third quarter. See if Grandview's defense can get it settled down yeah. now. After that last touchdown, that see if that changes the momentum a little bit here. And Summerall in the backfield by himself this time in the shotgun. Two guys in motion, they give it to Holloway. He looks for room, but Darion Davis has it bottled up there at the line of scrimmage. What a flag thrown. Yeah, Ben, going back to that last touchdown by um, Grandview, you know, that was a big time touchdown as the momentum was obviously going over to Afrocentric. And that was, a, you know, you need that touchdown to solidify uh, that you're still within, that you're still alive and to cut all momentum from Afrocentric. It's exactly what the Bobcats did. That was a. And sometimes the longer shift. drives, sometimes the longer drives are the drives that really just are the w is what you need to win a ball game. You don't need to, after a team scores, to come out and throw a bomb. You know you can slow things down and come right back one with your own. That was an illegal shift that time on. Afrocentric, and now it's second down. This throw out to the far side. Mm. It was caught, but Blaine Stanley brings him down immediately. So a huge loss that time, and that's going to bring up second and about 20. And Blaine Stanley, he's been doing a lot better job than at being at corner with that nice throw down. You can see some growth from Stanley. Another stoppage over there. Looks like we have a hurt Afrocentric player, so we'll take step aside, take care of him. Back here, the injured Nubian was Jerron Anderson. He was over there on the sidelines being checked out, but now it's Summerall. Fakes the screen pass, rolls out, throws, and has his running back fudge, and that was caught. But no game there, so that's going to be bring up third and long now for Afrocentric. Don't be surprised to see one deep right here. A lot of third and longs lately. Afrocentric has been throwing a bomb. Even at their own <laughs> five-yard line right. at, at one point, so Ramsey's got to place back. They've been doing a lot better job playing second or doing secondary, especially this game compared to the last. So see if they come up with just one big stop. Yeah, 
that's been the Grandview defensive backs making those plays mm -hmm. on those long throws. Charlie James, the most recent one. So third and long, Summerall's going to throw it. He was looking deep. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, and he's still going to go deep. Luke Lachey's in coverage down there. Incomplete, no flags. There was hand 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 checks on both sides <laughs> there, but no and call. Smack, some smack talking right. between both sides. I think a good no call, though. It didn't look like it was interference mm. on either one of the players there. So that's going to bring up fourth and long and probably a punt. Yeah, that'll bring a fourth down. If any time you need a block punt now, Bobcats have been very close then this entire game of almost game block punts. They've actually had a tip punt. And we have the coaches right next to us and they were just yeah. saying block. So yeah. it looks like they're in a block formation. They're going to go after this one. Block, Got everybody block up you would think would absolutely put, right. almost put the game to rest. We got a timeout. After Centric uses a timeout. So 2.49 to play in the third, set to punt. We'll be back. So fourth and long here for Afrocentric back here from Afrocentric High School. Oh, almost. There's the punt. And they're going to let it bounce around the 40 yard line. And Afrocentric actually had a player down here in the stands with his whole uniform on. That's what the coaches were hollering about there during that timeout. I'm so not sure what it's all about, but nonetheless. Cats will have the ball now with some pretty good field position, Ben. On the 37 yard line. Now all you gotta do is ground. And pound here. Yeah, you would Go. assume they're gonna keep running the football. Casey gives to Speaks. Ooh. He's going to lose a few yards that time. But at this point, clock running is a good thing for Grandview. This third quarter can't end fast enough for the Bobcats. A lot of five yards that time on the just yeah, for Centric sweet. at this point, Ben, needs a big time stop to try to get some momentum back here. It's starting to shift over to Bobcats after that last touchdown. They got to come up with either a turnover or find a way. Granby not to score. Another flag thrown. I believe we're going to get a false start on Grandview, so that's going to set them back even more. It's going to make it second and 20. So shooting themselves in the foot a little bit here on this drive after getting pretty good starting field position after that punt. I believe with two touchdowns, getting near the beginning of the fourth quarter, Ben, Bobcats are in no hurry to get that ball snapped and try to slow things down a little bit. Maybe melt the clock some. 
Here's Morawski, has a couple blockers. That's a good run there over the 35 yard line. So a good pick up there for Morawski to make it a little bit more manageable here. It'll be third and about six or seven. The clock ticks under a minute and a half now, a minute 20 to play in the third. And a touchdown here you would think would be pretty comfortable for the Bobcats. Third and seven, Morosky back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up a yard, but not much. And that'll take the clock under a minute, but it's gonna be another decision time for Coach Peters. Peters yeah, because definitely too far to obviously kick a field goal. And you're still, you're within the 35, so you got, obviously they're gonna go for it, but it depends what type of play they wanna go with. We haven't seen Kyle Ariel too much today. Got to think, maybe see a pass here. 30 seconds to play, and they're going to go for it here on fourth and six. Casey's in the shotgun by himself. He's going to throw it. Surveys over the middle. It's looking for James Lachey, but he was brought down, hit as he was thrown, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. So after Central will take possession here with 21 seconds to play in the third. Yeah, let's see if that changes the momentum a little bit here over now to Afrocentric side of the field. Yeah, really um, a blown opportunity at time for to for Granby to, to take advantage. Yeah, and put it to rest. Yeah. So maybe the last play of the quarter here. 21 seconds to play. That's actually going to be a throw. Summerall just rushed immediately in the backfield. The ball's on oh the ground. Wow. He fumbled it, but he it's picked it right back ground. up. It's still squirted out a couple more times. Let's see who has it. Grandview says they do. Waiting for the official call. Grandview football. Yep. Cats will get it. That's a huge nice play. I believe it was that Brandon Spalding that had the poke away. I actually think that was Joe Cotty that actually was the one that poked the ball away. Summerall was looking for somewhere to go that time and I believe it's the first lost the football. One of the first few fumbles of the football game. Yes. Favoring the Bobcats. So they're going to get it back inside the 30 with 16 seconds to play in the quarter. With really an opportunity once again to take control. First and 10 for Grandview. They give to James Lachey up the middle. Still on his feet, barrels his way close to a first down. Yeah, no rush and just keep, keep up with the running game. I believe that's gonna end in the first. That's gonna, gonna end the third quarter, I yep. believe. That's gonna do it for the third. So Grandview will take a 14 point lead heading into the fourth. We'll be right back for the fourth.
here we go here, back here for the fourth quarter. 12 minutes on the clock. And Kyle Casey under center. They give it to James Lachey right away. There goes James near the goal line, gets near the five, yeah. inside the five actually. Almost trucking his way through. Bobcats at this point just trying to melt clock and pound one more in. See the deal. It's been all the running game though today, Ben. Seen maybe a few completions from Kyle. Nonetheless, right. it's been all James and Borowski. Yep. James will add on to his stats right there with the big time run. You got also got credit to this O line really making some big time gaps and opening up the rushing offense. Would assume it'd be Lachey again here mm -hmm. on first and goal. They do just that. There goes Lachey. Oh man, Ooh. flips. Gets close to the goal line, but down around the one. And that'll take some more time off the clock. That's a scary moment right there, yeah. but this should be okay. Awkward hit that time on Lachey, but. It's gonna bring up second and goal from the two. And again, Ben, no rush right here if you're Grandview. Right, taking more time off the clock. Not 11 minutes. Casey under center. Lachey again, right up the middle. There he goes, dives into the end zone. It's gonna be number four for a Grandview touchdown. And now they have a three touchdown lead in the fourth quarter and seemingly have taken control. Yeah, it's gonna be James Lachey's fourth touchdown run of the game. Just when Hudson's gone, you just gotta go for your right. next best option and James is the guy. Although don't take anything away from the way Harrison's been playing also. Right. Doing a really good job rushing. Yeah, Murawski's done a good job of putting them in position and then Lachey's finished them off. Snap was a little bit high, but Giorski adjusts and knocks it through. So 35 to 14, now Grandview leads it by three touchdowns here in week two. And according to plan here tonight, but Grandview now up three touchdowns and see if they can milk this thing away now. Grandview set to send it deep with Giorski. It's a kick over there on the 25 yard line. Was hit hard, but I believe he stepped out of bounds. It's gonna be a late penalty flag. Yep. It looked like the ball was in play. It must have stepped out of bounds. Yep. Yep. After Sanctuary retrieved it. Let's wait on this call. It should be a late hit on Grandview though. Just gonna give Afrocentric a little bit better field position here with 10.50 to play in the final quarter. Still waiting on a call. And they got this, there's this, this Weird formation here that oh we've here seen a couple again. times yeah. tonight. The, last, the one time they did, it resulted in a touchdown. Let's yep. see if the Bobcats can stop it this time. And they got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the other side, which is exactly what they want. There's still a stoppage. Yeah, still waiting on. Maybe it's on that last play. Personal foul on Grandview, so that's going to advance the ball. We're well, waiting on that call. I think they're debating whether if they want to call personal foul or if the ball was out of bounds. Right. And I think they went with the personal foul. So Unless it's still going to, Amherst Central will still be in the same formation yeah. here. So yeah, here's this awkward formation that led to a touchdown before. 
And last time they went with a single guy over on the right side. Let's see what they do this time. Still waiting for the ball to be spotted. It's going to be at the 40-yard line. Let's see if Afrocentric can have more success with this formation. Oh, it's snap over the, over head. the head. It's Anderson who's at quarterback. He's going to have to get rid of it, but he's going to be sacked. Back at the 15-yard line. So they couldn't get the snap right, and that'll right, prove see, costly. On the throw down. Looks like we... Well, yeah, I believe that was James... Trying to see who the other guy was. Looks like Morosky. And Morosky also with the throw down. And he's a little ginger on his left leg. He might have to head to the sidelines. The Bobcats might have cut a little break right there with the bobble snap, knowing who knows what the play would have been drawn, but nonetheless, they take advantage of it. So a hurt player here for Grandview. It's Harrison Morosky. He's going to go off the field under his own power, so we'll stay here. Ten minutes to go, Ben. Things are looking pretty good now for the Cats. Right. Yeah, this last few minutes they've gotten control of it. As it's back with Sum Angelo Summerall at quarterback who started the game for them. They've gone to Anderson as well as Holloway to run some Wildcat type sets for the Nubians, but now it's back to Summerall. And it's second and very long. And another, another snap one. over the head. It's going to be a safety if you're not careful. And it will be. Safety. So and two, that seal the deal. two straight snaps over the head of Summerall. And that's going to be a safety for Grandview. 37 to 14, and they'll get the ball right back. I think Bobcats caught a two big breaks right there because we haven't seen a ton of bobble snaps from Afrocentric and they were there to take advantage and add on to their lead. Yep, and that gives them control now. Up 37 to 14 and now Afrocentric has to give it right back to the Bobcats. Another flag thrown. Looks like another sideline interference on Grandview. Seen that so many mm -hmm. times tonight. Not not a usual call. Maybe see it once or twice. Every but other game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fourth time we've seen a sideline interference call tonight. That's an interesting call there because there was a dead ball time out mm -hmm. there in between the safety and the kickoff. I'm not sure you know, that's that's a time that you're allowed to be on the field. So I'm not really sure why an, an inter a sideline warning is being called during a timeout when you're allowed to be on the field. Yeah. But nonetheless, right, we'll move past it. 9:47 to play in the fourth. Grandview with a commanding 37 to 14 lead now, but the game's been closer than that. Just in these last few minutes, Grandview's taking control. But Afrocentric had the ball a couple times, down seven, looking to go tie it up. But now have to give it right back to Grandview. And already a whistle blown. I think it's safe to say from both ends that these flags went a li little too much here today, Ben. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that call was that time. We might never get out of here. 9.47 again on this fourth quarter clock. And they're going to bring this ball back for the kickoff. This is two straight games, though. Last week was a long one, too. This is a long game for these guys. This one might go creep up towards 10 o'clock. Yeah. And that takes a toll. Mm -hmm. When you think about it in the coming weeks, Rarely do you see a game go longer than two and a half, really two and a half hours. 
And this will be two that eclipse that number. Most, a lot of them have been because of controversial calls. And a lot of flags happening. A lot of stoppages, mm -hmm. too. And they're going to kick off from the 20. This one's dribbled down to the 50 and dives on it. I believe that was Trey Cook. It was number yep. four, Trey Cook, at the 50-yard line. So that's where Kyle Casey will come out with the Grandview offense. At this point, the Cats can pretty much just keep running the ball and right. try to run off this clock with a 23-point lead. But... They had a scare today, Ben, and after Centric, they really came out, and at one point I thought it almost seemed like after Centric was going to have a chance to tie it, but Bobcats right. did a good job responding um, when they got to a seven-point lead to extend it and put things to rest. And it's all about answering sometimes when a team is yep. coming back on you and how you respond to that, and we've seen how Grandview's done today, and it's been all been pretty good. There's Darion Davis with the carry first time we've seen him in a while he picks up six or seven yards on first down Davis haven't seen much of Darion Davis in the backfield mm -hmm. tonight but good run that time it's been a lot of Murawski mm -hmm. yeah and like we we're saying Ben they use a, a ton of run different running backs they like to use right yeah when Hudson jump goes out they really go to a committee they use three or four different guys absolutely sometimes even five different guys that they distribute the ball to it's good, though. It gives them all of them experience. And yep. when it comes to big-time games, when you need to something to go your way. The clock ticks under nine minutes to play now. And I say that for this reason. I mean, we Another were flag. <laughs> Two flags. <laughs> this looks like a late hit, personal foul type penalty. Maybe on Grandview. It looked like number 54, Jack Wallace, was in on it. Yeah, it's good to have a lot of different running backs. I say for this reason, Ben, if you recall, we were there when Grandview went 10-0 and back in the year 2011. Yeah. Um, obviously with that great run that the Cats had. And uh, there was a point in that game against Liberty Union, last home game of the season, that uh, I believe it was Jason Franks got injured during the game and Andy Nocar came in and, he did he did pretty good and helped the Bobcats secure that win. So it's all about getting them that those that experience for the players. Right. And when you're gonna get in, you could get in situations where one of your starting running backs gets injured, you need someone to step yeah. up. And it's times like these where you really need it. And you never want a guy like Hudson Jump mm -hmm. to go down, but oh when he does, not. you have to have guys st step up. And it's nice to have them out there. Going to be third and about three here for Grandview. Be nice to pick this one up so they can continue to move the clock. Casey under center, and there's more movement. Way too many penalties for the Bobcats tonight. Unforced errors, really, with false starts and offsides. Um, yeah, on both ends, honestly. Yep. That'll be something to look for next week that it could maybe um, improve upon. But 37 to 14 is the fourth quarter score here. Still 8.53 on the clock. Especially if North Union coming into town next week, Ben. Anderson Field, you recall what happened last year. The Cats got beat actually at North Union, yes. trying to redeem their loss. Here's the jet sweep to Sam Speaks around the outside. The clock continues to run. So that's going to bring up fourth down. And heads up play really by Speaks to stay in bounds there to keep the clock running. Mm -hmm. But that's still going to bring up fourth down. Let's see what they decide to do here on fourth and five. Looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. Try to get a first down here and just keep that clock moving. Right. James Lachey is in the backfield now. Maybe they give it to him and see if he can pick up five yards. Kyle Casey's going to wait for that play clock to get down to five. He does. And Grandview moved. Again, it's Trey Cook this time. And just an 
extraordinary amount of penalties on Grandview tonight. Oh yeah. That's what happens when you have a young team out there with Kyle Casey, a young quarterback, making a second ever start here. Yeah, and they'll get better at it right. as the that's something games go by. They're definitely going to look at that oh yeah. going into the, You can't afford to do this next week. Mm -hmm. and some of them may, you know, may have been unfair, but yes, they have. But yeah, coming next week, you you know, you go back, you look at your footage, you see what you did wrong, and you just work on it and you practice it. And now it's fourth and ten. It'll be tough to get this. James Lachey somehow stumbles his way close. close to a first down. I believe he got it. He was hit almost right when he got the ball and then just carried Half defenders. Going, yeah. And that's a first down. Mm -hmm. Maybe by the, just the nose of the football there, Ben, you can see he got it. And they are moving the chains, and there's the clock. So that's going to be huge. Nice extra effort by James. Yes. <laughs> he was fourth, going down. Fourth and, and ten. Just give it to Lachey up the middle, and he gets ten yards. He was three yards short of that first down, and he kept going and extended yep. his way through. Let's see if they can continue to churn this clock that's now under eight minutes. They give it to Lachey. There he goes. He's hit, and I believe he picked up another first down. Mm -hmm. Now it's about getting out of this game healthy yeah. and as quickly as possible here. Wouldn't be surprised to see James coming out here pretty right. soon. Clock runs again now under seven and a half to play. Casey with Darion Davis in the backfield. They give it to Davis. Davis maneuvers his way, and Darion he's Davis going to get in. Touchdown. And I believe that's his first career touchdown, touchdown yeah. for Darion Davis. He scored last week, but Love was to see brought, it. brought back on a penalty. And Darion Davis all the way to the end zone <laughs> for a Grandview touchdown. And that really How caps that? things off. Yeah, nice job by Darion to stick with the run and just – Bolt straight into the end zone. Good for him. It's about that experience, Ben. There might come a time where you're in a really close game where you're going to need a big run like that. So that gives Grandview a 43-14 to 14 lead here in the fourth quarter. Extra point is up and good. Jorski does a great job kicking for Grandview. And adds the extra point. It's now 44 to 14 with 7:14 to play here in the fourth. We'll be right back. Up 30 now, so it's a running clock here for the remainder of the game as long as the lead is 30, which it is right now, 44 to 14. Six and a half and ticking now. Yeah, I believe the rule is, Ben, once it gets to 30, that's when the you have a running clock. So Bobcats are up 30, and the clock will just keep running unless the batch for centric scores. And he brought down, still on his feet, actually. Somehow, <laughs> now he's there's a pile of them. Somehow he got out at the 30-yard line now, and the clock will continue to run. Now they're going to stop it. So 6:08 to play. Granby's going to win this. They're going to move to 2-0, and, oh. and North Union coming in next week going to have to be a lot better fundamentally to mm -hmm. beat them next week. 
And North Union, they lost to Swanton last week. I'm not sure how they did this week, but it doesn't matter because North Union is still a team that when they play Grandview, they always give it their best. So Cats got to, they can't be doing the, you know, can't have the same penalties. But nonetheless, they Grandview offensively and running wise have been doing a very good job tonight. Hit hard there at the line of scrimmage. That's Fudge, number 22, the running back. But you're right, you can't go against a team, a better team like North Union next week. And they're going to be more physical. They're going to be, a, a, a Centennial was good last week. And Afrocentric presented a good challenge tonight. But Afrocentric, or excuse me, but North Union's going to be physical next week. That's going to be a tough game for the Bobcats. Yeah, you got a lot of tough games coming up. You got Bexley. Yep. Always is a rivalry game. Mm -hmm. Whitehall. I was going to throw. This one's complete over there on the sideline. That's number four. Great House has a couple catches tonight. Summerall. Give credit to Summerall. He's been doing a good job tonight with those two not only those two touchdown passes, but nonetheless, we're going to see him next year because I believe he's a senior next year. And yep. so the Cats got to be ready because he's going to want to come out and try to, you know, he's been, he's actually been giving his all both times. I believe that third time he's going to try to want to beat the Cats. Yeah, and they put up and a good fight here did. for the first three quarters. They were right in this football mm -hmm. game. And then a couple mistakes. They did a good job answering. Yes, a couple snaps over Summerall's head. And the safety kind of derailed their thoughts at a comeback. And here's Fudge up the middle again, brought down at the line of scrimmage. And that clock's now under four and a half to play here in the final quarter. But we talked about it last week when... You need to learn and you need to grow through these games, but at the same time, you need to win along the way. And that's oh what absolutely. Grandview did tonight. They didn't play a perfect mm -hmm. game by any means, and they have a lot to clean up before North and Union, but it's nice to, to go into that up 2-0. and oh. Yeah, Afrocentric, you know, had they not have as many penalties as they did today, who knows what the right. result would be. They've bailed them out quite a few times, but um, obviously there's a lot of things, there's some things to improve on, but there's also things that they did a really good job in doing yeah. tonight. Um, that you can be very happy with. Yep. You know, 30 point lead's a 30 point lead, so yeah. they've obviously been doing pretty well. But but, but usually when you give kinda up reminds me of the OSU game yesterday, right. honestly. Usually when you give up double digit penalties, you're not very successful, but Grandview was able to overcome that tonight. As we're gonna have third and nine here on a ticking fourth quarter clock now and inching towards three minutes to play. Like I was saying, it reminds me of the OSU-Indiana game yesterday, Ben, where Afrocentric was in it for three and a half quarters. Right. And then at that one point, the Cats, that's when they extended the lead and got things moving. Now Summerall is going to throw, almost intercepted. It was Luke Sterniker, but no call. That one's incomplete. But the clock will continue to run. Under three minutes now, and let's see if Afrocentric decides to just go for it now. How good, though, has James O'Shea been today? I mean, like, four touchdowns for Mr. O'Shea. Yep. Not only that, but also defensively, he's come up with a big time, few big time sacks made. He's been throwing a lot of people to the ground. Um, just a terrific game by James, like always. And then Luke also did a good job. Yes. Um, Honestly, there's a lot of people to give shout-outs to. Harrison Rowski, he had a lot of good runs today. Um, Here's the punt. It's going to land around the 30 and bounce inside the 20. We've got a flag thrown here at the middle of the field, a little scrum at midfield. Just a little bit of frustration at the end of the game, it looks like. Yep. Clock will stop at 151 to play. Grim Grandview leading it 44 to 14. We'll move to 2 and 0 on the season. And host North Union next week. It'll be a home game, I believe. Grandview only has four away games this year because the Bishop Reedy game is actually going to be at our field. It will be known as the away team, but. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing from this Cats team, especially offensively and defensively. You know, got to give defensive credit their dues, too. They've been doing a good job with um, 
you know, putting a lot of pressure this pa these past two weeks, whether it be Gilbert um, last week or Sirwall today, they've been putting a lot of pressure yep. on those quarterbacks, and that's they that just speaks volume on how well they are, they do a good job and how well they do a good job in practice. But certainly has to be focusing on the fundamentals. Secondary did good too. Right, they did. They played a lot better tonight. But the fundamentals certainly have to be cleaned up mm -hmm. before next week. A lot of flags, yep. A lot of flags, double digit. When you're penalized double digit times, it's gonna be tough to win a, a close game. Luckily they were up big here for this fourth quarter and were able to pull away, but they're gonna have multiple penalties called at this time. And they actually got players ejected. Somebody on Afrocentric was ejected from the game, I believe. Number four, I believe. Number four, Stephen Greathouse. Not sure what the reason was. Yeah, we. I mean, we had a, a scrum at midfield there. We couldn't quite see what was going on. <coughs> Must have been some pushing and shoving around yeah. midfield, but Just frustration at the end. Right. Still waiting for Grandview to be able to snap the ball and put an end to this game here tonight. Again, they lead it 44 to 14 with a minute 51 to play. Also got to, once one more time, Ben, got to plug the sponsors here tonight. All right, the sponsored by Grandview Pro yep. Fitness, Ohio's best 24-hour fitness center, as well as Jimmy John's. So thanks to those two sponsors, Grandview Pro Fitness and Jimmy John's. But still sorting out all the penalties. Grandview's going to get a, looks like there's going to be a 15-yard penalty. And it's not going to matter. They can almost just yeah. take knees. But I think they might run the ball. And now we're going to get a timeout called by Afrocentric. Afrocentric coaches aren't happy. They're having discussions with, you can see at the bottom of the screen, with the official. And now they're going to give them a timeout. So we'll take a break and be back for the final two minutes. Here we go, looks like Grandview's gonna take knees here to melt the clock down. Waiting for the play clock to tick all the way down before they snap it and take a knee. There's a signal, and now Casey will snap it. Just a couple more of those, and Granby will move yep. officially to 2-0 and on the season. It was a long one. We're coming near the end. Yeah, like we said, Ben, basically just a lot of things they can work on fundamentally, but still a pretty good outing offensively with the yeah. running game. Kyle, you also didn't have to make Kyle throw a lot of passes. That's always a win for the Bobcats offensively. Yeah, it certainly was in doubt for the first three quarters. After Centric played well and hung tough. It's all about answering after those first right. two touchdowns for at from after Centric. Making sure they don't get back in it. Yes, but Granby was able to pull away. And one more kneel down should do it. It'll be 
need another one. Nope, I believe that's it. Yep. So Grandview beats Afrocentric 44 to 14. I think the story of tonight was another slow start, a lot of penalties, a lot of mistakes, but again, win along the way, and that's what they did. Yeah, and that's it. The clock has gone out, and yeah, Ben, the Bobcats have another win, goes to 2-0. and I've got a scare for a while there in the game, but none the way, nonetheless, they found a way to come out with the victory tonight. Yep, so Grandview wins at 44-14. Again, we'll be back next week for the North Union game at home. That's a 7 p.m. kickoff, and we'll be on, go on the air around 6.50. So thanks for joining us here tonight yep. from Afrocentric. Ben McCullen, John Sterniker. We'll see you guys next week.